So now we come to the dark side. Leo, obviously with good intentions, came into power in 813. And as I said earlier, he comes into power here. But he did it wrong. Nikifora's son, Michael Rangabi, was overthrown. He was overthrown. He just happened to keep on living because he tonsured himself before they could actually, you know, stop him. When you take power by a coup d'etat, even if the person you're taking over is bad, like I would very much like a coup d'etat to take over Donald Trump, it's wrong. It's just flat wrong. We started to see that problem early with Nick Forrest. Okay, because Nick Forrest more or less um, wrongly took over from Constantine the Sixth, and therefore he himself was taken over wrongly because Constantine the Sixth might have still been alive at the time he ousted Irene, and Irene was wrong. And they ousted her, but she died the following year. Why didn't they wait for God? It's a really important lesson in history. I hate this lesson, but it's it's true. You know, God's right, we're wrong. All right? So he wasn't such an enlightened conqueror, and he ends up being conquered himself by death, you know, because he dies in battle. His son got mortally wounded, dies a couple of months later, and peacefully, peacefully, his son appointed Michael I to take over. But, Nikiforis, who took over the wrong way, dies in battle. Alright? Michael, who took over the right way, and whatever his good or bad was. Alright? And the, you, it depends on who you talk to, okay? He was neutral to the iconoclast, just like Nikiforis was. That allowed them to flourish. So now you have side by side weed and tares, the people positive the Bible, and the people positive the icon worship flourishing side by side. Now, to some extent, that creates a sort of, you know, t political tension because the icon worshipers want political power. But on the other hand, you know, they're supposed to be able to have the right to determine what, if they want to believe false doctrine, then that's got to be their right. But instead, <coughs> it was a coup d'etat. Again, this time, by the people supporting Leo V, the guy who became Leo V, who had been a general under Rangabi. Okay? Now, why am I leading up with all that? Because when his reign ends right here at Terata, you know how he died? And this is pretty, um, I, I, I can't say exactly unique, but close to unique in Byzantine history. He was hacked two pieces in a church on the altar. Some people pretended to be monks and they were really assassins and they hacked him to death on the altar. That's not normal for the Byzantines. They like to tonsure you and make you a monk. Maybe blind you, maybe castrate you, which are brutal enough, but not kill you. They hacked him to death at an altar on the church. Now, I want you to understand that because what that, that tells you a very important lesson in history. Whenever somebody's crusading in the name of faith, immediately you know their faith is bogus. Okay, it doesn't make God bogus. It means their version of their faith in whoever they call God, their version of their faith is bogus. Because, honey, if your faith is right, you don't need the crusade. You don't need political power. If he's a real God, and you have the right spiritual life before him, you just ask. Christ said in the Bible, ask anything in my name and I'll do it. So if your version of your faith and the gods that you believe in don't have that provision, then you can just ask for something. Then maybe it's not really the right God, or maybe your faith is wrong. And that's the story of the pro-lifers. They are exactly like the people who hacked Leo V to death. When you get on your high horse, when you're in false doctrine, 
you have to keep feeding it because it's a lie. You have to keep feeding it. So you have to keep telling yourself how right you are, how good it is. And then the next step is, well, if it's so right and good, you should fight for it. And then the next step is, if you should fight for it, then anybody who's against it is like the devil. And then you can start to justify violence. And this is why so-called pro-lifers are the worst. Okay? The only thing worse than pro-life is anti-Semitism. And this is how you know. I mean, this is how they justify killing abortion doctors. Oh, well, he's killing babies, so I should kill him. And in what universe and what Bible does it say that you have the right to revenge on your imagined claim that that person is doing something wrong, anything wrong? See? They're justifying murder on a claim of murder. And by calling abortion murder, they're calling the mother who gets one and a murderess. The Bible doesn't do that. Why are they? So now they're going to try and license murdering some lady or gal or who gets an abortion or the doctor who does it. That's murder. Even if they make it a law, it's still murder. And the people who are killing Leo V here at an altar in a church pretending to be monks. It never dawns on them that that's murder? And in a church? No, because they're too far gone. Their self-righteousness is so bad. They're so hung up on their little political cause. They think that, oh, we're going to kill, we're going to kill Leo V who sponsors iconoclasm. And that's a big victory for God. Honey, if God needed you to do that, he'd do that. This is why all the terrorists are wrong. The Quran says, Allah needs no partners. Okay, well then he doesn't need terrorists doing strapping on bombs. And he doesn't need anybody going into airports and um, railroad stations and even mosques. And setting off bombs in the name of Allah. God, if Allah wants to bomb... Uh, 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 a mosque or an airport to blow up. He doesn't need the help of a human. He can just say blow up. You see, that's the problem. So all these crusading Muslims or crusading Christians or crusading anybody, the very fact that they crusade tells you that their belief is fake. And of course, once you start to study the, the actual contents of their belief, you realize how fake it is. Well, that's what's going on here. So now what are we looking at here? Signs and wonders terminates him. And it was a wonder that they killed him that way because that's not normal. Okay. And the very word wonder means something so unusual it begs you to look at it. Teras is the Greek word. It's only used in the plural in the New Testament. Terata. Oh! It's like you're standing on the street corner and you see a, a, two buses run into each other. That's the kind of meaning of wonder. It's like, oh, I have to look at this. All right, well, you have to look at the fact that these terrorists killed Leo V in the name of icon worship as if it were holy in a church. They were that blind. So everybody hearing about it would be saying, oh, wonder, look at this, how he died. Now, that sounds really horrible, and I'm sure it was. He died defending himself. He used the cross as his weapon against them to try and defend them from the sword blows. Everybody hearing that story, you have to ask yourself, oh, they killed him. And on the one hand, you can say, well, see, God was, God was against him. On the other hand, you would be arguing very clearly, well, that's a sign that God was for him because they're killing him in the church. And there's many of them and only one of him, and he's using the cross to save himself, and by that cross he died. So that's a wonder. That's a story that people repeated over and over and over again. So Leo's name ended up living longer and harder and more even though he came to power the wrong way and therefore died a bad way. Remember the Lord said he who picks up the sword will die by the sword? Okay, so he dies by the sword. But 
the story is repeated. So what kind of sign and wonder was it? Well, the people who are pro-icon are saying, well, see, it's a sign and a wonder that God is for us because we were able to kill him. And that's the story they told Pros. Pros is short for prosopon, which means to your face, or literally means face. Okay? So it ends up meaning toward. Signs and wonders toward. And then this this is a, a like a little phrase to say for the purpose of. To to apoplanan for the purpose of you know deceiving. Here, let me show you. It might be easier to see it here. Okay. See this Bible works, same verse. Okay, to apoplanan. See it's an infinitive. In order to, that's why I'm translating it that way. In order to, pros can take the infinitive, pros also takes the accusative. So he could have used different words, but he's trying to get the meter to match the ruling period. So he's using an infinitive here. It's a kind of unusual construction. Not totally unusual, but there are other ways he could have said. He could have used hina in the subjunctive. He could have done it other ways, but he's, he wants to really get it across. In order to lead astray, if possible, and this word is first class condition if, if and it's true. True, it's possible. They elect, and that's the accusative case, of course, we've seen that before. Alright? So, our boy here is being used as sort of a poster boy of warning people when they hear that story. It's going to be told to them by the iconoclasts because that's what they're saying. That I mean, not by the the pro icon people. Because the pro icon people are going to be giving signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, the elect. Okay, well the elect are hearing that, and the people who are you know sort of like they don't know what to believe, they're thinking, oh wait a minute, but they destroyed him in a church. How could that be God approving of them destroying him? Yeah, ding dong. Just like all those warnings we had about Donald Trump and his background. The way he lied right in front of your face. Here's a recording of him from 30 years ago. It's real obvious it's him. And he says, oh, I, that's not me. Honey, you got your hand in the cookie jar. Don't tell me it's not you. The guy does not know how to tell the truth. And yet look at all those people who were deceived as very possible the elect. A whole lot of Christians voted for Trump. It's just total deception. So it's the same thing. Signs and wonders to, in order to, you have to sort of translate this in order to deceive. Idiomatically in English. If possible, yes it is, because the I means it is. Aeon would mean maybe it's possible, maybe it's not. Then you got other particles to show that it's not. So, yes, it is possible, the elect, to deceive them. The word Kai doesn't belong there because it means even, and they're borrowing that from uh, Matthew. Okay, and how do I know that? Because this is ending at a 7. Alright. I mean, it's possible that it, it's not, but I really doubt that, considering how the text is worded. But, well, you know, I'm going to be checking it over and over. Okay, this is the word that's in the Matthew account, but I don't think it's in Mark's, and neither do many scholars. Okay, so even if it's possible, the very elect. Okay, so that takes us to 845. So we're looking at a period here of 820 to 845 of a return to icon worship, promulgated and set up by violence. So, from 820 to 845 you got violence. And I'll cover that period next.